And you, if you know he's going to grant it, just keep on praying that he gives it to you. <laughs> if it's his will. Sometimes we approach God as a stingy person who must be persuaded to give us something. Daniel knew the problem was not with God. God keeps His commandments and God is merciful to those who love Him. And Daniel prayed is remarkably with understanding and earnest and he understood when he understood what God was doing he understood why God had the children of Israel in bondage. Yep. He didn't say get them out of bondage he said he didn't go to God and say, God, would you cut down to 70 years to maybe seven and a half years? Could we just have a... T in California, or no, is it in Kentucky? Where is it that they, they, they're going to release 1,000 inmates? Kentucky. 1,000 inmates and save millions and millions of dollars in doing that. God is... God... No. What did I say that for anyway? There was some reason why I said that. God is going to release his desire, release his blessings on us when he sees that we are earnest in believing what we want to do. Note the second word is knowing how to pray is first. All right. Secondly, is sub notice the word in verse 2 and verse 2 and, and verse 3. He, he, so he sought the Lord by prayer and what's the next word? Supplication. Supplication. Notice it's, it, notice it's not singular, it's plural. Mm -hmm. Supplication is a picturesque word. It is, it's, it's, it's a word that means you're easily bent or plowed to supplement. It means that it derives from a Latin word which means to beg on one's knees. It means to beg. It means to entreat. It means to seek by earnest prayer. It means to suggest a posture of humility. It means when you come to God, you're saying, you know, I'm not sure that I'm worthy to ask this. You know, Lord, I come on my knees, as it were, in my spirit. Lord, I'm just not sure. I know me well enough to know that maybe I cannot even truly be worthy to ask this question. I don't know that I'm worthy to to even request this. Supplication gives the picture of one begging on bent at knees. And if you enter in... I remember you've heard me say this. Dr. Burpo, back when I was a kid, he was on radio. And he said, Listeners, now it's time to go into the throne room. And I knew what was coming up. He said, let's walk to the throne room where God is. Can you imagine if you were invited to go to the throne room of God and you were invited to come in where the Holy of Holies are? You remember in the Old Testament, who could go into the Holy of Holies? You may not come back out. Only the high priest. And what did they do? They put a rope around you. And, huh? And a little bell. And if you messed up, you died, and nobody could come in and get you, so they had to pull you out. Huh? Hmm? Yep. They had a rope tied around the priest who once a year went into the Holy of Holies where God was, and if he was not in a lot of that, If his sins were not he, covered, yes. he died right there. Right there. And then they, then they couldn't go in again. They had to pull him out. That's right. Do you remember Aaron's brother, Aaron's sons? Yep. They tried to be what they weren't, and God struck both of them, and they both died. They both did, yep. The picture is this. When you go into the Holy of Holies, you go into the throne room, 
and Dr. Burpo would go, and you, 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 now we're in the throne room, and the door shut. Yeah. And as a kid, I would jump up. Is he really in the throne room? Is he really in the Holy of Holies? Is he really talking to God? I was like 12, 13 years old. Whew, man, wouldn't it be marvelous to go into the throne room and actually talk to God in the throne room? Of course, I was very vivid in those days. I thought that actually, he actually did. That physically did. That was awesome. When you stand before a holy God, it's time to take all the veneer off. It's time to say, I mean, to come clear to God. If there's sin in your life, might as well go ahead and confess it. Yeah, you might as well. Might as well, huh? He knows it. He already knows. But he wants you. When 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 Adam sinned and he hid in the garden. Oh boy. God said, Adam, where art thou? Did God know where he was? You better believe he did. Sure he did. But he wanted Adam to know that he, God, Adam, God wanted Adam to know that God, he knew that where Adam was. You can't hide from God. And the best part of it is we, can't, we better go before God when we have sinned and confess our sins. Open our hearts to him and confess. God loves that. God sees that you're sincere in doing that. True prayer is, number one, in response to the Word and grounded in God's will. Is that on your outline? In response to the Word and grounded in God's will. You are, you are in agreement. You've made that check. I'm in agreement. I agree. You know how hard it is to agree with anything? Yeah. I just don't agree with you, Pop. I don't agree with that. Well, if you're not in agreement with God, then you're in trouble. Number two, it's characterized by fervency. Right. Characterized by... It means you are fervent. You are zealous. You are so clear in your mind that this is God's word and God's will that you are actually excited about that. Thirdly, you're characterized by self-denial. It's not about you. Daniel went before God for the sake of his people. Right. He pleaded for his people. He said, whatever it takes, I want my people to get through this. Number four, he identified and unselfishly with God's people. He didn't say, all those people down there in that church are, are been just bummers. There's a reason nothing's ever happening down there. It's because it's Bill, 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 and Johnny, and Jimmy, and, and Richard, and, and, and Mary, and, and that Cheyenne. I mean, if it would ever... Uh, no, no, no. Wait, no, no. It's, it's not me. I didn't mention me. I did, though. I didn't mention me. It's not me. I'm doing all I can do. But what did Daniel do? He said, we. Yeah. Daniel, he, he put himself in the same class as everybody else. Right. He didn't blame everybody. He said, Lord, we have fallen short of the glory of God. And then strengthened by confession. He, was, he confessed his sins. And then sixthly, he depended on God's character. You say, well, you say, he understood God. He knew God was sovereign. Mm -hmm. He knew God was merciful. He knew God had grace. He knew God was, he was all-powerful. He knew God had, was eternal. God, he knew that God was all-loving. God was forgiving. And God, and so he understood God's character, and based upon God's character, he said, "Your character is at stake here. I want you to be every, all that you need to be." And then number seven, and his goal was that God would be glorified. Yep. If this request that you grant God, will you be glorified? Will those who See what happens when you be glorified. And so that is the essence and the essential of what Daniel's prayer was. I, I don't want to get into the, the next stage I want to get into, and I don't have time tonight to do it. And I'm glad because I didn't do it today. The next thing he did was not only did he, not only did he pray, and then he, 
he came before the Lord humbly, but the next thing he did was what? He fasted. He was fasting. And then he was fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Now there is some significant things. So next fasting, next week I want to talk about what does that mean to fast? And what does it mean to have uh, sackcloth and ashes? Just exactly what that was. And what does that mean? If somebody wants to come next week dressed in sackcloth and ashes as a demonstration, that would be that would be that would be kind of fun, interesting. And demonstrate that prayer. Demonstrate how Daniel prayed. Sackcloth is just raggedy old things. Like some of my clothes. That you would never think of wearing and the ashes uh was to humble yourself down the humility that you would be even willingly before God put ashes on you because it meant I'm dirtying myself up. Mm -hmm. And it was just something that the Israelites, it was almost an abomination to them for that. But yet, Daniel did it. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful and thankful that you have given us an example as the New Testament says these are our examples these men were brought before us as an example of how you want us to at least try to mimic and imitate Daniel was just a, just a young boy we all can be like a Daniel. We may not be used like Daniel was, but we're now called to be a Daniel or a Paul or a Peter or a John. But we are called to be faithful in this community, in this family, in this church. And so we thank you that you have opened the hearts and the minds of, and, and, and allow us to see some of the characteristics that we would like to have ourselves. So we thank you for the fellowship together. May you bless us according to your will. May we learn your word. And we'll give you thanks in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I should have been sitting behind this fan. Anybody got any... Uh, My voice is going out. Got any what? Offering? Somewhere.